Hi, I'm Jamie Doris, and you're watching Miss Congeniality TV. Have you ever wanted to be a beauty queen? Be honest. Or maybe you couldn't care less about a darn crown and simply want to look your very best. Regardless of why you are here, welcome. In the last episode, we met with California queen and pageant coach Elizabeth Peace and learned all about platforms, service, and getting media attention for your cause. I'd highly recommend that episode if you need more help building your personal service brand. The biggest problem pageant queens have is that they go into a media interview completely unprepared. In this episode of Miss Congeniality, we're strapping on those heels and working on our walk. One, two, three, let's go. Yes, all queens know that your confidence and poise are communicated through the way you move your body. So we're flying to Tampa, Florida to practice walking with Mrs. Florida American 2020, Katrina Spagnoletti. She isn't just the first black woman ever crowned on the Mrs. Florida America stage. She's also the oldest. So what's in a walk? Well, a lot it turns out. If you want to be a beauty queen or at least look like one, you have to learn how to present yourself to the world. So today we are in beautiful Tampa, Florida, and we're going to learn how to strut ourselves both on and off the stage. Let's go inside. Hey, beautiful, how are you? Come on in, welcome to Florida. <laughs> ah, girlfriend, thank you so much for having me. This is beautiful. Thank you, let me show you around. Okay. Spagnoletti. Yes. Thank you so much for having us in your home here well, in Tampa. Thank you for being here. Welcome to Florida, the Sunshine State. I love it. Isn't this beautiful? <laughs> Y'all, this is her home. This this is not like a paid for backdrop. This is your home. Yes, it is, and it is so awesome. I, every day we wake up and we're like, we're so blessed. We're incredibly blessed to be here. And every morning I get to hear this. <laughs> I love it. So let's start this interview by telling the viewer what your current title is and the other titles that you have had. Because you know this show is all about beauty and of you are course. a beauty queen. Well, my current title is Elite Mrs. Queen of the World. Elite yes. Mrs. Queen of the World. You know, it's something I've always told my kids, but they didn't believe me until now. Now that I have the sash and the crown and the title, it's official. I'm Queen of the World. <laughs> I love it. I want to be Queen of the World. <laughs> You can march, <laughs> okay, plug. But I am, um, I am the uh, former Mrs. Florida American, and that was really incredible. I mean, there's a lot of history behind there. I made history that day, and I mean, I'm so honored to have started that title in Florida and then take it to the world. I mean, how how amazing is that? What would you say is the whole point of a beauty pageant, and are they even relevant today? Well. I can tell you when I first when I first even thought about it, I was about 53 years old. I was in Virginia, and I competed for Mrs. Virginia, and I was second runner-up. Okay, but I just thought, okay, I'm going to go into it. We're going to have fun. I didn't. Ha I had no clue what to expect because I'm 53 years old. I have a pageant. What? But I just decided I just wanted to do it. And when I when I came out second runner-up, I felt like I won because again, you're competing against women that are. 30 years your junior, and for someone to say your name, second runner up at 53, that was incredible. And it just, everything that you, you how you grow uh, with the process of getting to that moment that you're crowned or your second runner up, first runner up, um, you are growing so much. I thought that I was as confident as I could possibly get. I thought that I helped my community know. To be fair, the first time that I competed in Virginia, I made up a platform, and the second time I realized that I needed something that was I was so passionate about that when I was in front of the judges in the interview room, that I they had to feel that I really truly was behind it a hundred percent. It wasn't just a filler. It wasn't just a filler, and I felt I, and even the on stage question, you've got to feel that passion because if you feel the passion, you know exactly what to say from the heart. Pageantry really brings you to a level that you wouldn't even imagine you would ever go. And it continues to do it, even now. So, what is the most important thing that a lady needs to focus on if she wants to 
be a beauty queen mm -hmm. or just look like one? What's the most important thing she needs to focus on? Hmm. If she wants to, I, I'm always going to say how she conduct her, conducts herself. She has to conduct herself like a lady. Um, it's, it's something you have to practice every single day. And I think, I think that is so scarce right now. Oh my gosh, girl, it's preach, so scarce. preach. What does a lady act like? I think, because I noticed us sitting down, you and I, we're queens. Uh -oh. the, way we're, the way we're sitting down, like we have learned how to position our legs. We learned that when you're sitting down, your posture is up. You're, you know, you're, you're bringing out that sophistication. I think that because before this, I'm sure I slumped a little and I was kind of like- Oh, let's do it. <laughs> oh, here. <laughs> that was us, that was us. Hey, and girl. Now, <laughs> because I've actually coached and I've said, I've said to my clients, I don't care where you are. Everything that I teach you how to walk, how to, how to po pose, Take that, if you're in the grocery store and you think, oh yeah, I'm getting ready for a pageant, be that girl. Walk in that store like you are walking on a stage about to get that crown, you know? Stand in pictures, not like you're taking a shot at King's Dominion or Bush <laughs> Gardens, but like you are standing there in front of a professional photographer and your stance is perfect because practice makes perfect. And yeah, that, that's, live it. Yeah, you gotta live as a queen, you got to do and it's, it's all a benefit to your life. Everything, because people are going to look at you and they're gonna see that confidence and they're gonna, they're gonna, you're gonna draw them to you. And it could be where, some, where you're just sitting there and someone has a charity, they'll invite you to it. Or people just love to see beautiful, positive things. And we have to be that. What part of pageantry comes easiest for you? Swimwear. <laughs> <laughs> Does it really? Yeah. Why is that? <laughs> I'm just comfortable in my own skin and I'm not afraid to like get in high heels. I don't think there's any shame in it. I think that it is like the true, like it will show your true essence of confidence. And that is the easiest thing that I can do. You can't hide any lack of confidence when you have, when you're on stage in front of hundreds of people in six foot heels and you're walking. There's nothing to be hidden and you better feel confident in your skin. Coming up next, we practice our walk. You cannot hide any insecurity when you're walking because the judges are going to see it. Something people always ask me about is how to walk like a lady. So you heard it from Katrina herself. She is the pro of walking to look like a beauty pageant queen. Come over here, Katrina. This is her spot right here in her house. My special spot. With her big, fabulous mirror. And this is where she practices walking, right? Yes, I do. I prepare for pageants and I even prepare for the night out. You pre pre prepare for the <laughs> night out right here. Yes, I do. Once I get on my outfit, I just feel so good. So I go to the mirror, I look at it, and then I just want to like feel it even more. So I practice walking. Can you show us what that looks I like? I sure can. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand over here. <laughs> now, I'm gonna go over here, right? Okay, okay. yes. All right, are we ready? We're gonna get you in the mirror. Ooh, okay, yeah. one, two, three. We're gonna take it and we're gonna walk because we love this outfit, right? And what are you thinking that whole time? I'm thinking I'm fierce. I'm thinking I'm loving my outfit. I'm thinking I'm going to have a great time. I'm thinking my husband is going to be so proud of me when we go out. You want to make an entrance. <laughs> <laughs> you do. And you can ask my husband. I'm always making an entrance. And you know what's funny? When she and I were talking on the phone getting ready, ready for this interview, yes. she said that one of her favorite things about the pageant world and being a beauty queen is, is the, walk. the walk. Why? Yeah. Because it shows that confidence. I mean, it really shows your confidence. The way that you position yourself, the way that you stop, the way that you glide across the stage. I mean, it shows that confidence because you cannot hide it. You can, especially wearing that bathing suit that I love wearing. You cannot hide any insecurity when you're walking because the judges are going to see it. Okay, now that we're in our pose, we don't want square shoulders. We kind of want to angle it a little bit. It makes you look longer and leaner. Okay. That's what we want the, want the judges to see, okay? Okay. And we're going to take our lead foot in one, two, three and walk. 
one foot in front of the other. Make sure that posture is up, that, hit, that chin is up slightly. Stop, there you go. We're gonna take that lead foot, step out, turn, very elegant and demure. demure. Let's turn again. Very sophisticated, demure, and ladylike. Make sure that those arms or those hands are slightly rubbing aside the thigh. Ah, oh, so you said brushing your, your hands. Your hands, you wanna slightly have them on your side because a lot of people don't know, they don't know what to do with their hands. Yeah. They don't know how to, what to do with their arms. They'll either swing them really a, a lot, but the proper way is just slightly touching your mid thigh Ooh, like that. And this is for anything. Yeah. Just for day to day life. Yes. Where do you put your hands? Right here. And you're just going to brush. And plus okay. it will help you if you're doing it, your posture, your shoulders are going to be back and your posture is going to be great. Yeah. You know, because yeah. even if we're doing video and I see that my arms are wilding out too much, I'm like, yeah, we got to do this over again because you don't want too much energy in your walk. You, you don't really want don't. too much energy. You don't want too much energy. You okay. th because if your arms are being noticed, what about the rest of you? Oh, if your arms are flailing, yeah. they're going to notice your arms flailing. They're not going to notice your beautiful face, your beautiful gown, your swimsuit, your head. They're not going to know any of that. They're just going to see this person with these arms. So Katrina, what would you say are like the tips for good heels? Well, of course we both have on pageant shoes, what they consider pageant shoes. So I would say, you know, definitely get yourself something with a platform, something that's really comfortable, a thicker heel because it's so much easier to keep your balance and something that's really cute that uh, you can wear with anything. And I think we did a perfect job with our Chinese laundry. So these are, these are Chinese laundry? Yes, mine is Chinese laundry. And I think these are the best, most comfortable shoes that you can possibly ever, ever purchase. I really do. Yeah, they are very comfortable. Most people would think that, I mean, these are what, like six inch heels? Yes, they're they six inch They would think heels. that they're incredibly uncomfortable, but they're actually very comfortable heels and they give you a lot of height. Yeah, they really do. Okay, Miss Jamie, you've got your, your posture is fantastic. Your confidence is amazing. Let's step in three. One, two, three, walk. There you go, girl. Sophistication. Oh my goodness, look how beautiful you are. Take that pose, take it around. There you are, gorgeous. Now that is confidence right here. You are the winning queen, honey. Don't you just love her? <laughs> <laughs> Yay! So have we finished everything with walking? We've, I think we have. I think you, me how I to think walk. you are, you know, amazing. I mean, I thought you were great before, but this little lesson, it really boosted you to a different level. It really did. <laughs> I actually really enjoy walking. I do. I absolutely do because it does show that confidence. I mean, you can't hide from when you walk. I mean, it's going to make or break you, especially in the pageant world. And you've got to have a great walk. It, it, you have to have a great walk. And Pensacola pageant coach Pamela Nail teaches us the details of walking with a gown. No bouncy wouncy. Be smooth, smooth, smooth when we walk. Look at me. I'm like an angel. Yes, you are. Are we going to work on walking in this now? Yes. Now okay. it's time for you to learn how to walk in your gown. Yes, ma'am. What's the major difference between walking in gown and walking in swimsuit? Well, the thing about this particular dress is that you have a train and like in modeling with any bridal show, um, what you need to do is show this. So what we're going to do is if you'll let me demonstrate first, okay. um, you need to walk. It's going to flow. You're going to walk, and when, as you turn, you're going to take your, your chiffon part, twirl it around so where it will just lay right here on the ground. And then when you turn around again, you grab it and you twirl it like this so that it comes around again. See what I mean? Okay. Is there any other difference in the way I, I, I walk no. versus the swimsuit? No, just be smooth. From the, it's from the waist down, no bouncing, no bouncy wouncy. Be smooth, smooth, smooth when we walk. Okay. Okay, and walk. Smile. Now stop there. Now turn it around and turn as you're doing that. There I don't you go. I feel like I have room to do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe not room here, but that's what you would normally do. So stop here, mm -hmm. make a pose, mm -hmm. and then turn. It's back to the, everything is that basic pivot though. It's going to be one foot in front of the other. The other one, it's a two o'clock position. And when you turn, it's going to be like this and you take your train, turn it like this, 
and then you're going to turn again, step, step, and that. Now the other alternative, okay. you could just walk. Like? You could just walk gracefully around in a circle and let it flow, and then let it. You pose, pose here, right. All right, right. Let me try that. Okay. So start here. I always take a breath that kind of elongates, right? Right. Start walking. Very nice, very nice. That is the alternative move right there. Very graceful. Just whatever you're doing when you're walking, it all needs to be from the waist down and there does not need to be any bouncing, especially in a gown. You wanna glide across the floor. You wanna turn gracefully and don't waste a lot of time by turning and standing there and staring at the judges. Turn and move. Turn and move. And look Turn at and the move. judges. Look at each and every one of them in their eye. Don't stare at them. Gaze at them for a moment and then keep on. Big smile all the time. Break your smile. You know, don't keep it, don't keep it just to where it's artificial the whole time. You know, break it. Like genuinely just and look out at the audience, look out at the judges, look out at your friends, and then turn. There we go. Yeah. So it's like, you know, the important things I always think about, things that you've taught me is making sure you make eye contact with each judge, but don't get weird, right? right Just right. one at a time, making sure that you're walking without too much bounce or no bounce at all, as you would say, and then keeping your arms kind of to your side, like almost brushing. Mm -hmm. And they flow, they flow gently. Yes. And the other important thing is when you're standing anywhere for photographs or anything, remember the pivot position. Always stand in the pivot position, hands by your side, or either hands are right here, never right here, and never up here, but just right about in the center right there. Like right where your belly button is. Right, right. And just kind of fingers gracefully together. Gosh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Now that we can walk the walk, it's time to talk the talk. Next, we go over social media tips. So you suggest that people be tagalicious. I think so. Ten years ago, beauty queens did not have to market themselves on social media, but these days it's almost mandatory. Judges will review your Facebook, your Instagram to see what you're posting and how you're connecting with your followers. And the same could be true for potential employers, business partners, even sponsors. Your social media presence is huge. But beyond just taking great pictures, what else do you need to be doing? Let's get some more social media marketing tips and learn how to build a more solid brand online. I probably have a different opinion than some on this, <laughs> but I feel like if you want to inspire women to become part of the pageant world, you have to be real. They have to understand that you're not constantly made up with lashes and perfect hair. They have to understand that you're not constantly dressed to the nines, that you have a real life, that you really have off days, that you really go to carpool with your hair in a ponytail. You know, people want to see the authentic you along with um, the stylized you because the stylized you is what they're aiming for, but they also want to know that they can get there. People are watching and they, they want, they feel like they get to know you through social media. So if you only post once a month, then you're essentially that person they run into Walmart once a month, like that's it. But if you post like every day, like just something, whether it's you just getting your coffee or a lifestyle picture you did a month ago or something like that, um, then people feel like they're getting to know you. So you do need to post often, not like five or six times a day, like don't dominate the feed, you know, but one great solid image or something that's really fun once a day, I think is great, at least four or five times a week. Um, another great way to get other people to see your images is be really thoughtful about your wardrobe and where you're getting your stuff from. So tagging, you know, is, is a big thing. So I know with most of my shoots, uh, I'll tag, you know, where, where the clothes came from. So you tag their boutiques, where the earrings came from, the outfits came from, the shoes, you know, who does hair, who does tan, just like, you know, you're, you're tagalicious. You, you know, you give everybody credit where credit is due. That's one thing that you, that's, that's awesome about you. You never leave someone out, ever. I'm tagalicious. You're tagalicious. <laughs> I've never been told I'm tagalicious. I need a sash. I need, a, I need another sash. <laughs> tagalicious. So you suggest that people be tagalicious? I 
think so because I think that it increases your audience of, of who's actually seeing it and people really like those people will follow you back so uh, my friend Leslie does a ton of my pictures and I'm so thankful for her but you know one one trick that we have like if we're gonna be out for the day if we're gonna be um, going to the farmers market and we're gonna go get lunch somewhere and then maybe we have plans to go to the park after I'll take three different changes of outfits and every time that we go somewhere new we'll kind of scout out a spot to take a picture so it's just a normal Saturday we're just doing things we would have done anyways um, but I do outfit changes as we go and we just scope out a spot to take a picture and it takes 10 or 15 minutes and then you have content for the week um, and if you're mindful and intentional about the places that you take those pictures you can kind of make connections with the business owners maybe in the place that you take the pictures what should people not be posting <laughs> Um, you know, it's small things, right? Like be sure that your background is well manicured. You know, if you're in a parking lot, try not to take pictures of license plates in your, in your pictures, you know? Um, so I think just being mindful of like your background is so important. And then obviously you, you don't, you want to stay away from things that are politically charged or are offensive to some people or are negative or hurtful to one people group. I think just trying to be to be kind to everyone in your circle and intentional about the things you post is also super important. Well, y'all, that's all the time we have left for this episode of Miss Congeniality, The Making of a Beauty Queen. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed it. Coming up next, we are breaking out the cameras. It's time for a photo shoot or maybe two. We have two photographers walking us through headshots and lifestyle shots to give us great content for our social media. Remember to love yourself, be yourself, and let's make this world a more beautiful place. Until next time, I am Miss Congeniality.